Hey guys, it's Lena from Studio R12 and I like big signs and I cannot lie. Today I'm going to be showing you a new big sign from our Christmas collection. It is the Jingle All The Way sign. I'm also going to be showing you in this video how to drop shadow and how to use some non-traditional colors in your signs this Christmas season. Be sure to stay tuned after our intro to hear about our giveaways and support and information about next week. I'm so excited about our giveaways today, guys. We are gonna be giving away three brush sets to three lucky winners and a special surprise pack of stencils that I will talk to you about at the end. In order to be entered to win, remember to like, share, and comment. Show us some love, right? And we'll love you back with our prizes here. I'm ready to get started stenciling. Are you guys so excited? <clears throat> I am so excited about this project. I, I really love a big feature sign in a home, right? Especially when I'm creating a gallery wall or these are really cute on porches too if you've got a nice porch space. So be sure to check out this stencil from Studio R12. It's 5118 and this is the four size, right? So the underscore four, this is the big one and I am really excited about it today. So I've taken my big board here. This is also available on our website. Um, to see everything I'm using today, we're gonna be posting a link to that page in the comments. So be sure to look through the comments, find that, and you'll see a link to all of the tools, all of the products I used today. That way you can get them for yourself and make your life a lot simpler, right? So I went ahead and just based my board white, so easy. Then I took my stencil here and I laid it where I wanted it. And because I have the Studio R12 stencil and the Studio R12 board now, they match perfectly. So I don't have to do use a T-square or do any kind of measuring or anything like that, right? I'm just gonna take my tape. And in case you're wondering what kind of tape, we always just use painter's tape, right? That's what we always use. So easy. And if you are using a board you found at home or a board you have at home or that you bought somewhere else, we do have T-squares available as well. That way you can make sure you're getting things lined up where they need to be. You don't want a crooked project, right? Well, probably not for this one. Sometimes a crooked stencil is okay. It kind of sells the vibe, right? But for this one here, I want more of a crispy look, kind of clean. Okay. so. When we're talking about drop shadowing, which is the technique you're gonna see in this, that's that dark layer underneath when we saw the stencil. So that's that really dark layer underneath the stencil. Um, so what we're gonna do here is the first thing you have to do on a project like that is mark your original space. Now, if I were drop shadowing the whole project, I would take my paint and I would just mark just a little place on it. I'll show you kind of how I would do that here. And, oh, I forgot to get my paper towels out of the drawer, guys. So silly. Must be pregnancy brain or something. <laughs> so, taking my paper towel here. And I've got my big dome brush. Now, um, I have seen some questions on last week's live. I was kind of filtering through the comments because sometimes I do that. I get so excited to see what you guys have to say. Um, and I saw some people asking about bleeding under stencils. And, ugh. That is the stenciler's nightmare, right? Unless you remember that wet paint's washable, so just wipe it off if it happens. But one of the biggest ways you can prevent that is having these dome brushes. So these dome brushes are such a key. They have that rounded shape and they keep you from pushing paint under your board. The other really important step here is making sure you're wiping off your brush, right? So I'm gonna show that really carefully in this one since we had that question. When I pick up paint, I'm picking up way, way, way too much. You've got a big glob of paint on there. It's really glossy, shiny, okay? When I come to my paper towel here, what I like to do is roll my brush. I flick my wrist across my board and it pulls that big glob off, okay? So you, without working it into my bristles. And now I'm gonna just do that swirling technique on my paper towel and I'm gonna keep doing it and I'm gonna push kind of hard, okay? I'm gonna keep doing it until I see a really dusty color coming off my brush, all right? So I just remembered that I saw that comment and I wanna to talk to you guys about it real quick. 
So that's the, how easy that step is. So simple, just being cautious. The other thing to remember about bleeding is when you stencil, you need to use a dry brush. So having multiple of these brushes on hand is ideal. Otherwise, you're gonna have to you know, wash it and then wait for the brush to dry before you can continue your project. So if you haven't already, purchasing a five pack of these, it's a really great way to get you started stenciling. You'll have five brushes to work with, right? Or at least the three big ones for big projects like this, okay? So now, again, I was talking to you about drop shadowing and marking your board. So if I were gonna drop shadow, in theory, this whole project, I would mark my project just by lightly dusting across, and I might do over here a little bit too, but I would just lightly do that because I don't need to stencil the whole thing true, right? I just need to get a marking. So that way I can see where my original stencil is supposed to lay, okay? But for this project, I am not stenciling the words, or I mean drop shadowing, sorry, I am stenciling them. Um, I am not drop shadowing the words all or the, so I'm just gonna paint those true and that's gonna give me a good mark, really easy mark to see what I'm doing here. Um, and again, that little bit of paint I used on my brush is gonna do that whole letter, that whole word there without any trouble. Um, and now that's, that's pretty dry, like in theory I could keep painting it over and over and over again without really any trouble, but I like to give my paint a little bit more time to dry so I'm gonna go ahead and move to my other color just and give that just a breather, right? Okay. So now, put my paper towel up here. I'm gonna do the same thing, working my brush off here with this green until I get that nice dusty coat. And so I feel like, that's good. Sometimes you can test the brush on your finger as well. And if you get anything more than like a dust, on, do you wanna look at my thumb here? If you get anything more than that, like for instance, let me show you how gloppy it can be sometimes. So see how there's like stroke lines on my, my finger here? instead of that dusting just on my thumb. So if you're willing to risk getting your fingers a little messy, I usually am, it doesn't bother me. You can test off on your finger before you go to your board as well. That's kind of a little trick, especially if you're new to stenciling or if you're teaching someone who's new to stenciling. So maybe you're teaching your kids or your grandkids or your neighbor, you know, trying to get some, have some fun during right now, right? Kind of showing them what you know. That's a quick trick to have on hand. Okay, we're gonna use this blue again. I'm gonna go back for that all. And so when you're stenciling, stenciling is that layers game. So as you can see here, I'm doing like multiple coats before I'm ready to go, right? So cute. Okay, And I'm gonna just stipple across here really quick because I don't think the all needs a whole nother coat, but I think it got a little patchy in a couple places. So I'm just gonna even it out with a quick stipple, which is just that tapping technique, right? I love, love, love this green color. I have also seen in our comments a lot of love for our red, this brick red we use. What are your favorite colors to paint with? I'm, I'm seeing a lot of love for that one. I love using this like avocado shade of green. I think it is so pretty. And I think it's really versatile too. So I would love to see in the comments if you guys can just share with me like what your favorite colors to paint with are. Um, when I paint, I use a lot of creams because I do a lot of farmhouse, so a lot of cream and gray. But when I'm working on projects like this and creating dimension, one of my favorite colors to use is this avocado green. It goes really well with lighter greens and darker greens. It's just kind of a, a perfect match, I think. I like it, I think it's versatile. I guess that's, to me, that's something I like about paint. So if you just have a color you like maybe, but just curious. All right, so both of these are pretty dry. I could probably stand to do another coat on the word the and probably all as well. When I'm looking at my see my original sample there, it's looking a little darker than what I have here. So I'm gonna go back for a third coat. 
And the way I know I need it, so when I peel my stencil back, I'm still seeing a little bit of white come through. Not much at all, just a little bit. And when you're stenciling, be sure to peel your stencil back and check because um, you know those mirrors you have that the one flips and it's like really zoomed in. You can see all your pores and all your wrinkles and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I look so terrible? And then you flip it around and you think, okay, there I am again. <laughs> That's right. That's kind of how a stencil works. It's like that zoom in mirror. So you have to peel it back and see the whole picture. Otherwise it might look a little, a little fuzzier than, or a little thinner than you think. So be sure you peel it up and check. It doesn't hurt anything. Stencils are so easy too to just lay right back down where they go. So simple. That's pretty much what the drop shadowing technique here I'm gonna be showing you is too. It's just moving my stencil around on my board, um, which is part of the reason I love stencils so much. Again, it's that versatility it really gets me. Stencils can just do so much. And I love that. So I'm picking up, I picked up a little bit of paint right there where it was like only half dry. So I'm gonna go there with a stippling technique. If you have that happening, just stipple lightly. Ooh. Sorry, my leg was itching. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, so that looks so much better. I think that looks really true and great, okay. So I'm gonna throw these brushes in the water. I also saw last week a couple people ask about um, what's in my bucket for the brushes. Brush care is really interesting. We could do, I could do a whole video on brush care and if you're interested in seeing that, let us know in the comments and maybe we'll see if we can't get something together for you. Um, but with these dome brushes, so simple, plop them in the water and you can just leave them there until you're ready to move, ready to wash them for sure. And you can just rinse them off on your hand, like on your palm, under under like a sink faucet, just rubbing on your palm like this. Or one thing I have found over the years that works really well is a porcelain ginger grater. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it's got those like pokes on it. So you can just hold it in your hand under the faucet and rub your brush. So cool, works out really great. And they, they last for a long time. So that's a brush cleaner that you know is not gonna absorb the paint and get yucky and get gunky. So super great tool. If you don't have one, you can buy them. They're super great. Okay, now this should be dry. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to move our stencil. So I'm gonna undo my tape. I'm gonna leave it on the back of my board. I'm just gonna untape it for my stencil. Here it is. We've got it all lined up and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna move my stencil down a little bit more. There we go. And to the right, to my right. You can go to the left. There's nothing about it's right that's special. I just usually go down into the right. You can go down into the left, whatever works for you. And then you just wanna look over and make sure you have a level line across your top here and across the side that's open. So I actually need to tip my stencil. There we go, just a little bit that way. You're gonna reapply the tape. There we go. And everything that's getting a drop shadow, so for this project, that is the jingle and the way, you are gonna use a new brush. Now again, for the bleeding, don't go back to these wet brushes. Your brush has to be dry Okay, and I need a black. I forgot to pull that, so I'll have to get into my drawers here. If you don't have a paint station at home either or something where you've got like your paints available to you, I, I just love having a setup where everything is at my fingertips. So handy. I wish I had a designated craft room in my house. If you have one, I am jealous. And if you have one and it's like cute, you should send us pictures too. Especially if you're working on a Studio R12 project, send us a picture in your craft space. Are you like an outdoors crafter? I know some people who like to paint outside and that natural light, so pretty. Just tell us what you like to do. I would be interested. I don't have a designated craft space. I'm sad about it. I have one here at work and I, I guess I have to be happy with that. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get my husband to get us a bigger house and get me a craft room, huh? Love it. So what you're gonna do, 
is the same, same stenciling technique. Just rub my brush off, and then I'm just painting everything black. And what I would normally do is two, maybe three, but probably just two black covers really well. It usually doesn't have a lot of see-through stuff to it. Two coats on this. Whoop. All right, so as you can see, I have made a little boo-boo there. This is a line, and I always say it, and I didn't do it. Lines like this move on stencils. They don't have the, the lines here to keep them still. So, move that back where it goes. Um, what you have to do on those is stipple across. And now that I have made a mistake, I can actually show you how to fix it. So if you've had bleeding under your stencil, or you have, like I have, you've just made a little mistake, just take water and a paper towel, and just wipe it up. It's that easy, it's gone. Nobody has to know. Well, you guys know, but we'll keep it a secret, right? Okay. We're gonna go back. And I'm gonna stipple, I learned my lesson for a minute. I prefer the swirling technique. I know people who stipple always, they just like it. That's how they learned or whatever. Um, stippling for me, you usually have to have a heavier loaded brush. So I think it, I personally find that I bleed more under my stencils on projects that I have stippled a lot, right? So that's one of the reasons I like the swirling technique. But if, you're, if you like to stipple, there's nothing wrong with that. But these little lined places are kind of where you have to. You don't really get to swirl unless you can hold them down. Then you can swirl, but I didn't do that either. So I just made all the flub ups here live, live in front of you. No pressure, huh? So cute, okay. I'm gonna finish this jingle, and then in, I'm just gonna tell you I would do the same thing down here on way. So it works the same way. And we're gonna move on to our next board so I can show you the next step. So cute, okay. So in theory, that's how you lay your shadow. You move your stencil again, you paint it black, as many coats as you need, and then you have a shadow underneath. So I'm gonna grab my other board here with my shadow painted. Okay, so I have the black all done here. Now I'm gonna take my stencil and I'm gonna line it back up with the words all and the. I'm not going to look at jingle or way. Those are just fun to say this way. But I'm going to look at all and the and get it lined up just right on there. There we go. That would not normally take so long, but I kept bumping it with my thumbnail. <laughs> Sorry. It was probably painful to watch. Okay, I'm going to tape my stencil down here. Also, something I have seen people do that I want to warn you against is they tape their stencil to their work surface instead of to their project piece. Um, the reason I don't do that is because, um, like, especially with a table like this, like the one I have here is on wheels, and if I were to, or someone was to walk in here and bump my table, it might change where my stencil was laying on my project. So I, that's why I tape to my board to my surface that I'm working on, okay? Just in case you're wondering about that as well. I don't know. If you're wondering about anything, be sure to tell us in the comments. I like to hear what you guys think. I like to hear what questions you have. I really do, I, we have people who sit and answer you while we're live, but I love to go back later and check out what you guys are thinking because it helps me when I'm here talking to you know what you want to know, right? So be sure, tell us what you want to know. Now, I'm just gonna paint right over top of this and it's gonna leave, just so you can see, 
that ever so slight bit of black underneath and give you a nice shadow, okay? So we're just gonna do this. And this is red, and it's that red that you guys love. It's that brick red that we always get so many comments about. I always get so excited to use it because I know how much you guys love it. Um, so we're using that, and if you remember, I've told you about red before, red just takes lots of coats lots and lots of coats. So that's why I'm starting with this color instead of the pink because I know that it's going to need a lot of attention. So I want all my layers to get good and dry underneath. Whoop. Give it time, right? So cute. And I so I like this non-traditional the blue here and the pink that we chose for this project. I kind of like those non-traditional colors. I think that's fun, especially if you live somewhere warm where like you're not getting that cozy Christmas snow. Like it would still play with your, you know, your warm weather really nice. If you're like a, in, on the beach or something. These are really cute colors to decorate. I actually, when I was planning this project, if you can see behind me, this have yourself a merry little Christmas and those adorable colors. I love that porch sign. I painted this to pair with that. I thought that was such a good palette. So I kind of pulled some inspiration from that and I didn't paint that one, someone else did. Um, but I pulled inspiration from what they had done and I love the way it turned out and I kind of think, now I might want to buy them both for my house and put them both on my porch. Painted, right? Perfect together. Make a nice little combo here. Super cute with the jingle bells and the Christmas ornaments. Adorable. All right. Now, I'm not going to put this brush in the water yet because I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to use this paint. When you use acrylic paint too, especially if it's not a color you use a lot, you need to shake it. I'm sure you guys know that if you use acrylic paint. That's all I'm doing. So it's not a color I use frequently. It's a pretty peach color here. I painted my jingle bells red. They need to be yellow. That was silly. I'll fix it. <sighs> Sometimes. It's pregnancy brain. They say that's a thing. I think I have it. I think I have it. Okay. Can I go here with this pink? This takes a lot of layers to cover this black. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Put that right in front of your sight lines, guys. Sorry. Thanks, Stephen. Saving the day. So this, again, this is just lots of coats. Oh my gosh. So tell me how you're feeling about this project so far. I, or if you've ever done this drop shadowing, or if you've ever used it with our stencils, let me know. I would love, love, love to know what you have done, if you've ever used the drop shadowing. So be sure to comment and tell us. Also, remember, comment, like, and share if you're just tuning in to win today. We're giving away tomorrow at nine gonna be these five sets or five brush sets sorry we're giving away three of them that was a lot of a lot of numbers all the wrong way we're giving away three of these five sets of brushes and also at the end I'm gonna be showing you what our grand prize winner will be getting it is a here's a sneak peek it's a stencil pack and it's a good one I'm excited about it so and again, if you don't win, it's okay because in the comments we have a description of all the tools I've used here today. We've got the brushes, we'll have the stencil, the board, um, all the giveaway items will be there as well. So, I'm so excited to share those with you. Be sure to check that out. Also, if you just love Studio R12, if you use our stencils, I, I have to say, um, the live we did, I think it was two or three weeks ago, maybe four now, I was looking at the comments and there were just so many, so many comments that and it made me realize how blessed we are to have you guys as customers, um, where you just were saying such kind things about our products and about, about us as a company. And I just know that everybody here at Studio R12 is so appreciative of that. Um, so just thank you guys for being awesome. If we haven't said it in a while, thank you so much for just being great customers and for supporting us. We really appreciate you. 
So be sure you just keep doing it, right? One of the great ways to support us, especially during these lives, is to like and share them. Another way is to follow us on Instagram. We also have a Pinterest page. So if you want to see what we're doing, even not in videos, check out Pinterest. Um, and we are on YouTube. I know some of you discovered us from our YouTube page. So if you are a YouTube watcher, if that's where you originated, let us know. We love knowing that. Um, so be sure to subscribe to us on there. We are still doing videos on YouTube. We've just slowed down making them as much because we're doing these lives for you right now. So be sure you just let us know, you know, how you found us and follow us on social medias. And for these Facebook Lives, be sure to comment on them, like them, love them, give us some love, and share us with your friends, right? We, loved, we love to meet new people also. Oh, and another thing I wanna say too, I have so much to say today, it sounds like, is if you are using our products in any way, you're not making nice projects at home, I'm telling you, I love to see your projects. So please share them with us, send them in, post them on Facebook and tag us, message us with them. Just flood our social medias and our inboxes with your pretty projects. I would love to have enough projects come in that we could maybe do like a little feature video. So if that's something you'd be interested having your project like featured on a video maybe, like we could show it, please share it with us. I can't share it with others if you don't share it with me. So be sure you're sharing your projects you make at home with us here at Studio R12. Okay. It's getting cute. It's getting cute. It's going to take a ton of layers, so I might go ahead and just give it one more just to show you the effect because I think it's going to have to take some dry time before it's going to take more paint today, unfortunately. That is the, the downfall of the live, though. Sometimes we have to cut it short because nobody wants to watch paint dry. <laughs> so cute. Okay. And this is that, again, that brick red. And I'm just using acrylic paint. So any acrylic paint will work. I cannot tell you where we get our paint. Sorry. We have to buy in bulk, so it would be wrong and it would be different than what you need anyway. But it is acrylic paint, so you can just pick up any type of acrylic paint in all your favorite colors at your favorite craft store, or even sometimes like local Walmarts, a lot of them sell acrylic paint. And you can also mix colors, it's really interesting. We've mixed a little bit on here before, so if you're not having, if you don't have a shade or a tone that you like, pull up a color wheel. I believe we even sell color wheels. Those like pictures so you can have a reference. Maybe if you have a craft room, you're lucky ducky, you can get yourself a color wheel and have it hanging there so you can kind of see what to do, how to mix your colors, right? Create some really pretty stuff. Okay, then I'm going to do one more coat of yellow just for my own sanity. And then I'm going to tell, show you our grand prize winner giveaway. The only thing about these drop shadow, this drop shadow technique, you want to cover it or like paint it, coat it until it does cover completely. And I'm using really light, really thin colors for this, like yellow and red. And the pink is actually doing a pretty good job because it's got a good white base to it. But, so if you can see, I could probably call it a day here if I wanted to. If it were, if I were going to really finish this project out personally, I'd probably do one more coat. But I'm just going to show you where we are right now. This is after three coats on everything. And again, I'm just going to call this. That one over there took four to five, I believe. The, the finish over there took, I, I want to say five coats at least of the red, probably four of the pink. And probably even five of the yellow as well because they're just such thin colors and you're covering black but I'll show you what I have so far just so you can kind of see how it works it's not as pretty as the finished one but that's how you do it okay 
So you move your stencil again down into the left or down into the right. Well, this is the left and this is the right. But either way, whatever works for you. We usually go down because you think about light coming from the top, but it can go either way. One of the issues with going straight down, just pulling it straight down though, is you don't get enough of that pretty curvature, especially with these cursive letters. So be sure you pull to an angle, right? Okay, either direction. Um, and then you're just gonna coat over till the black is covered. Now, I'm gonna tell you what we're giving away today for our grand prize. We have this stencil pack here. I'm gonna open it. We're gonna do a little unboxing here together and look and see everything that is in it. These are embellishment stencils, is what we call them. They're just perfect little stencils you need to jazz up all sorts of projects. Super cute, we're gonna just pull them out. Ooh, okay. So you have some banding lines on this one. These are the ones I'm super excited about. So you know when you see those frames on signs, if you don't wanna make a frame, like build one or buy one, you can use these banding stencils right here, lay them on your board, and paint yourself a frame. So handy. So if you like that frame look that we're seeing right now that's really trendy, you need this stencil set. There's this thick line. There's a thinner line. Oh, that was fast, wasn't it? Then we've got another medium sized line here. And then we have, ooh, this teeny tiny one. I love it. Also on these, those, that's just what I would use personally probably the most but these have all sorts of handy other little bits and pieces. They've got checks, there's circles, there's diamonds, and there's those like candy cane swirls, perfect for Christmas time down here at the bottom. They all have the same thing, they're just in different sizes. So I'm gonna show you the biggest one here and let you look and see, no, <laughs> let you look and see here what's going on. I can back it for you probably. Can you see that good? Can you see those? Okay. So we've got the diamonds and the circles and the squares. Also with things like diamonds and squares and then these candy cane swirls as well, like these swirls. If you've ever tried to paint those harsh lines, that's really hard. So these are a tool you need and perfect circles. Also very hard things to paint freehand. So be sure, even if you aren't our winner today, you go on our website on studior12.com and grab yourself a set of these stencils. They are a handy thing to have around, okay? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, be sure to like, share, and comment so you can be entered to win one of our three brush packs today. These are a pack of five. And guys, if you haven't hopped on to grab these yet, you need to. Also, even if you win, grab another pack because as you saw today, I used six brushes. That's more than even a pack. So be sure you grab yourself a couple of these. That way you have enough to make your projects beautiful without having to wait a lot of time, right? Also, we've got this stencil pack to give away today. I'm so excited about it. So be sure you like, share, comment for that one as well. Give us some feedback. Let us know how you felt about this project. If you like the drop shadow, if you like non-traditional Christmas colors, just give us some give us some feedback. Let us know, and uh, we'll see you next week on Tuesday. We're gonna start releasing our lives on Tuesdays now, so be sure you catch us on Tuesdays at noon, and then again on Tuesdays at seven. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.